The World Wildlife Fund estimates that only 15% of the coastal sage scrub remain undeveloped. All the ground cover that you see is non-native. So what I'm interested in studying right now is um, the native regrowth. Um, the California sage scrub, the California artemisia. Environmental system students Francesca Henderson is finding out how best to help California sage recolonize part of a bluff top known as the knoll. Exotic plants have invaded the upland section of the University of California Scripps Coastal Reserve, and Francesca wants to know what would give the California sage a leg up on its competition. For the first decade that I was the manager, I would say recruitment or natural recovery um, seedling establishment from this plant was next to nothing. One of the areas that's the most difficult to restore basically is the area near the bluff edge, and so it's been a target of our restoration. Francesca has laid out a series of plots where she'll test different treatments to figure out which might favor the native sage. She's working with ecology professor Elsa Cleland to see if adding carbon to the plots will help yeah. the native Four seedlings those. take root. Okay. Even and ten. Okay. And ten. Um, soil microbes in catatrophic need to get their carbon not from carbon dioxide in the air, but from eating carbon that's plant-based. And so if you add a source of carbon to the soil, the microbes aren't happy they eat the carbon. They increase the population of their biomass take up other essential nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus into that microbial biomass so that that nitrogen and phosphorus is on a drippy Saturday morning, volunteers from UC San Diego's Eleanor Roosevelt College joined Francesca to weed out invasives and plant native seedlings. Yeah, I was excited considering it was pretty rainy out. You know, you never know how many people will actually show up for volunteer days. Sometimes they, they overestimate. It was really nice having over 50 people out there and the families, and it was a good group of people. The hardest part of this project was the initial setup getting all the ice plant um, removed, um, just clearing out the plot so it could get ready for planting. It went by really fast. And basically you just dig a little hole, find the feel down to the bottom of the plant and then dig a little bit of a hole just to loosen the roots and then you can see it when it comes up. So when we had our volunteers out there, um, it was great because there were so many of them and we needed the manpower to do it. So instead of having to hire laborers or have me slave out there for like four weekends in a row, we um, removed the ice plant and we even had them help plant four of the artemisia plants into each plot. So we have um, some transplants over there in the wheelbarrow of artemisia, which is the coastal sagebrush, which are all these like bushy uh, plants you see around that smell like herb. They smell really good. You can kind of like feel how long the root needs to be. And then just plant it. There's three treatments. There's nitrogen, which we added as a rice straw blanket. And then the second treatment was carbon, which we applied through an activated charcoal substance. And then the third one was um, sawdust, which absorbs nitrogen because pure wood materials are super high in carbon and their carbon will absorb all the plant feeding nitrogen in the soil. Francesca will return all spring to see how her seedling plants fare. She hopes the lessons they learn here will help guide future projects to restore other spots along California's coast. The bluffs out here are my favorite place in San Diego, the coastal reserve. 